Good evening, everyone. It's Shamila Ramjohan coming to you from the Red Corner Chat. This evening, I have the pleasure of speaking to a very special guest, Comrade Mohammed Chunara, who is the CEO, Director, and Founder of the House of MCC, PR Communications, Crisis Resolution, and Total Events Management, and lots more. So we're going to get to know all about Comrade Chunara and what he's been up to. Good evening, Comrade Chunara. Good evening, Shamila. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you so much for coming onto the platform. I think you have so much to share and you're such an inspiration. Do you maybe just want to briefly tell us who is Comrade Chunara? Of course, beautiful. Before that, I just want to thank you, Shamila, for opening your platform to me. So I think for me personally, my most important thing is, and what I wake up every day, what makes me excel every day is my country. Making sure that every single corner of the aspect of the country that I find myself in, I must be doing work that is inspiring, number one, that is changing people's lives, number two, and that is going to leave a legacy for millions of people in the near present and the near future to come. So for me, most importantly, as a civil activist, um, as a gender-based violence advocate, most importantly, I think that's actually how myself and you met. You uploaded something to Facebook, I think it was a few months ago. Somebody was troubling you and I sent you a direct message. I'm like, Shams, don't, ha don't tolerate this. Like, this is not acceptable. Call him out. Let's take this to task, you know? Um, and most recently, I have joined um, the basically the, the call for cancer awareness in South Africa. So my grandmother has had cancer. My aunt has had cancer. One of my aunts has died from cancer. One of my cousins has died from cancer. And I think more than that, we don't even need people close to us to die from cancer. It is a global pandemic. And it's something, if we do have a platform, we need to raise the awareness around that. So on the 3rd of June, 2020, I took the pledge um, with regard to the Cancer Association of South Africa to remain bold, as you can see, um, for the next two years of my life. For one, to raise awareness around cancer awareness, and number two, to help the Cancer Association of South Africa um, raise the much needed funds that they require. So whoever is listening now, whoever's gonna be listening later on, on the other platforms, on Sharmila's platform and my, my platform, Please donate now via the Cancer Association of South Africa, via the Instagram accounts, via their web pages, because this is fun, this is really needed. Yeah. Okay, just um, my incident was um, an invasion of my WhatsApp, remember? Yes, 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 of yes. So I just want to make it clear that to everybody out there, it, it was just a WhatsApp uh, message. Well, it was WhatsApp messages that was coming from a total stranger and it was quite, you know, abusive and whatever, whatever. So, um, Comrade Chunara, well done on everything that you're doing. I think there's so much that we can actually talk about. But I just want to find out what inspires you when you get up every morning to do what you do? I think for me, it's that, you know, we see so much of corruption in our country and not just the country, but the world. And so much of nepotism and cronyism going around. And I think for me, we, if we want to see the change, then we need to be the change. The change that we want to see, we need to implement. Every single day when we wake up, we need to make the conscious decision and the conscious effort to be better and to do better. Because if we be better and if we do better, the country will be better and the world will be a little better. And what I always say is the only thing that we need is a little bit more love. As, as long as we put love and passion and devotion into our work, that will be seen, that will be resonated with. And people from all walks of life will come on board and will join your cause and your fight for freedom, for justice, for equality. And for me, you know, this is something that Uncle Ashraf Garda always says, that a champion nation needs champion people. And in order to be champion people, we need to make champion acts every single day. And each little champion act will come into a world of a champion nation. And that is what we need to implement. Champion acts every single day of our lives. 
Well said. I love that. And I love Ashraf Gada and Champion South Africa. He's doing amazing work. Yes. What would you say is your proudest moment? So my proudest moment, I would say the epitome of my leadership life has truly been to have the ability to be of service to humanity and society at large over the multiple leadership roles I have served in. It is truly refreshing to see how honest ambitions, a clear vision, and unwavering wants to create great change for the masses can become a reality with small steps every day. Whether that is reporting a pothole at the top of your street or fallacies in the state of the nation address, and this I want to repeat, fallacies in the state of the nation address. Yes, guys, fallacies. We need to report it because our very core purpose as civil activists and advocates is to do all we can to ensure the establishment and the continual of an equitable society for all. This is something that Champion South Africa and Akut Ashraf has been championing for, for tens of years now, for decades now. And it's something that I've just recently joined. And I commend Uncle Ashraf for the work that he's doing. It's really important work that he's doing. The biggest mishap that I have made was to trust the wrong people, I would say, while on my political journey, of which I have learned from, I have gained wisdom from, and I've moved forward with a greater understanding that just because I would like to envision our democracy as free from corruption, nepotism, or colonialism, that might not always be the case. But I have the responsibility and I have a great, great duty to report these instances, no matter the person, no matter the organization involved. And this has given me the greatest of grounding over the many years of service I have had. The great honor and privilege of acting as one utility for country and two for kin. Lovely. Do you find that there are whistleblowers that come to you? So, you know, this is, part of, this is part of what I do. And I think it's because I have always been very vocal on what I do, that no matter the organization and no matter the person, you can approach me. And I will keep your, your name, or your surname, your credentials, whoever you are confidential. And I will have the matter escalated in the most professional manner possible. So I think that answers your question, Sharmila. That is actually very, very good to know because I think a lot of people who are going to watch this, they can take yes. heed to that. And if they have a complaint, they can actually confide in you. I think that's very important. Of course, 100%. That's something that I want to reiterate. Yes. yes. Because yes. the thing is, we have a duty and responsibility to do all we can to make sure that our country and our world is a better place, no matter the person involved or the organization. Country, the duty is to country first. Okay, I'm just going to take a step back. Why Comrade sure. Chunara? Do you maybe want to explain that? Sure. So um, I started my political career very young. Um, I had entered, it was just a year before I had entered university. Um, and it was around the Fees Must Fall, um, you know, movement. So Fees Must Fall, Africans Must Fall, Outsourcing Must Fall. Um, and, you know, Roads Must Fall, the whole fall is movement. And I got very involved in my matric year in that regard. And then when I joined the University of Pretoria and I studied politics, I done triple major and double minor in political wow. science, international studies, French, um, et cetera, et cetera. I then got very involved in the SRC. And I got very involved as a class representative. At one point, I was actually a class representative for about six different classes, from anthropology to political science to um, international studies, etc. Um, and my political career had grown from there. I had then become the UK president for, for Transform RSA, which is a lobbyist group um, that champions the rights of basic South Africans on the everyday. And yeah, and now I'm basically a finalist for the Mail and Guardian 200 in the civil society, politics and governance um, category. That is wonderful. Congratulations on that. Thank you so much. Well achieved and well deserved. So I just want to find out what's been your biggest surprise in your career to date? Of course. So I think, well, for many, this question would take a higher order answer. 
And as you might envision your career moving in a particular course, but God, and I always say this, but God is the best of planners on your career or your life journey. It has to have a specific and a great deal to do where God knows you are to be in your near future. Where I had envisioned myself being an academic by now, holding my master's in African um, policy and security studies in the African continent, in the role um, of junior lecturer at my alma mater, the University of Pretoria, while running for my very own corporate crisis resolution firm, of which I do the latter, and installed as a PR counselor for City of Johannesburg under the ANC, of which is the plan for the upcoming 2021 municipal elections. So what I'm saying is enjoy your journey and appreciate the many folds of wisdom it has to offer for the end goal. So just on that, Comrade Chanara, if you had to change something or, or give yourself advice, of course. looking at yourself 10 years ago, would you have followed this path or would you have, would you, the advice you give yourself, would you have gone into a different direction? So, you know, there, there's some, this is something that I get asked very often, like almost every single day, multiple times by organizations, by grassroots movements, by, you know, people that I just interact in the daily. And I always say I would, I would not change a thing. I truly believe that every single thing that I've been through was to lead me to where I am now. But if I had one advice, just one advice to give a prodigy that wants to follow in my footsteps, say, for the next 10 years to come. I would say, listen more, listen better, listen more attentively, and act later. Don't be so rash to act. And I think that's one of the most important things for me that I want to share. And also, don't just trust anybody. You know, a lot of people will come on your journey, and a lot of people will sell you the world, and they'll make you believe that you are this amazing amazing gift that has come and yes you are don't get me wrong you are amazing you are a gift you are god's gift to this earth part of divinity is within you because god has made you but you don't need anybody as long as you have yourself and as long as you have god you have everything so that'll be my advice are you a morning person i am i am so what, what's the one thing that actually drives you in the morning? What do you think of when you get up? When I get up, I want to see my country be in a better country. I want to see my people being in great greatness. I want to see them progressing. I want to see the world being free of gender-based violence. I want to see mothers and children being happy. I, I don't want to see hunger in the world. I want to make sure that the work that I do on a daily basis translates into this, basically. What do you want to see in South Africa through your work in the future? Yeah. So basically, I want my work to, to stand as the chief advocate and of against gender-based violence, number one, against abuse against children and women. Most importantly, I want sustainable communities to come from my work and to make sure that the legacy that I left can be followed by others to drive the champion nation that we need to see by champion actions. And that is through making sure that on a daily basis, we are providing the country and the people that we interact with in an equitable manner. So we need equitable model communities to be built. And that is the most important thing for me. So you have a voice. You're a male. You're a youth. You love speaking and acting on gender-based violence. Take me through that. Yeah. So, you know, this is something that I have had a first-hand personal experience with. Um, and I think, you know, growing up and understanding that the way that males use their power within community to literally torment women and children. And as leaders, as, as male youth leaders with a platform, we have to make sure that we do everything in our ability possible to say this is not okay, this will not be tolerated. And whoever you are, no matter your position, no matter your rank, you will be called out and justice will be served. 
I love that. And you have the platform, you're driving it um, with lots of change, lots of implementation. Well done on that. You mentioned cancer and the Cancer Association in your introduction. Do you want to maybe yes. take me through that and your involvement? Of course. So um, my grandmother suffered with cancer uh, a few years ago. Um, and during her whole you know, um, chemo stage, she had come and lived with myself and my mom. And we'd gone through you know, the, the whole rehabilitation period. And I think that's like one of the biggest misconceptions that people have, um, that they think that the rehabilitation period is actually the easy period. It's actually the worst period. That's like the period where you see, you know, the vomiting and you see um, the hair loss and you see like the sleepless nights and, you know, all of that. And it's just, it's really just heartbreaking. One of my aunts had died from cancer. One of my cousins had died from cancer. Um, another aunt of mine had just survived breast cancer. Um, and it was actually Nadia Jefta that has inspired me to take the pledge. So in this year, Nadia Jefta went involved for Cancer Awareness yes, um, no. with the Cancer Association of South Africa. And I had seen you know, Nadia Jefta do this. And I said, you know what, this is something that I want to do for the longest of time. And I'm going to join my sister Nadia Jefta in solidarity. And I'm going to do this for all the cancer patients, for all the cancer survivors. This is something that I'm going to do. So on the 3rd of June, 2020, I joined Nadia Jefta on um, Instagram, and we both had a uh, joint um, status update on Instagram on the 3rd of June. And I took the pledge to remain bold, as you can see, for the next two years of my life. So June, 2022 um, will basically be when my pledge will end. And yes, yeah, so that's number one, today's awareness around cancer awareness. And number two, to help the Cancer Association of South Africa to raise the much needed funds that they need. Wow, that is amazing. What a great initiative and well done on that. Are you feeling cold? Because Johannesburg is very cold right now. Oh, you, <laughs> you know, I was actually looking at an uh, upload that my very good friend and neighbor session I uploaded. Actually, one of my endorsers for the Mailing Guardian. 200. I saw that, yes. Um, yeah. And, you know, she uploaded this beautiful photo and she's like, you know, Sprig is in it. And I messaged her, I'm like, who, who? It, it, it looks a lot like Windsor, hey, a lot like Windsor. Yes, it is very cold. You can see I'm all high collared and just trying to keep warm. And Eskom's not yeah. helping us with the load shedding as well. Yes, they're not. <laughs> yes. So, Comrade Chunara, House of MCC, your PR agency, what inspired you and, and how did that come about? I think for me, most importantly, I knew what I wanted to do after, after university. I knew that I wanted to open my own crisis resolution, um, public relations and communications firm. I knew that I wanted to go into total events management because it's one of my passions. So uh, from a very young age, I've you know, loved uh, making stuff look beautiful and exquisite in my own home as well, when my mom and I purchased our home in Houghton, um, it was like a little project for us, you know? Um, and, you know, especially with, you know, cooking and catering and all of that, it's something that was very close to, to my heart. So I knew that this is something that I needed to get into. But also um, with crisis resolution and PR and public relations with regard to communications, I've seen a lot of firms, you know, um, not be very equitable in, in the regard um, and I wanted to change that dynamic. I wanted to be a firm that um, was model, you know, at the very basis, was equitable at the very basis, and did not discriminate on the clients that I represent. As long as the clients that I represent is um, trustworthy and upfront from the word go, I will work with them. And that was the most important thing for me, was to use my experience and my expertise over the many years of my service to assist and help people in the best possible way that I can. COVID-19 affect your business? I think COVID-19 has affected all small businesses uh, tremendously, um, and uh, more so for the events business. Um, and I, I've been, yeah, so 
I think for me, it's, you know, getting back into public relations, getting back into communication and, you know, pushing that agenda, you know, post COVID-19. What do you think are the challenges that small businesses are facing right now? I know it's just getting back into gear. A lot of businesses are closing down. What would be your advice for, for new startups? Well, you know, funding would be the number one problem and capital, a rolling capital. So if you don't come from huge amounts of money, then your business is going to unfortunately suffer. Um, and it's not something that's far into South Africa or to Africa. It's a global thing, you know. So I think the most important thing is for now to make sure to keep your spending and your expenses to a very minimum, you know, just spend on, you know, the necessities, make sure that your business is staying afloat. And I think that's the most important thing. And, you know, we have a lot of, well, well the government, the ANC as well as has a lot of funds um, that you can apply for. Um, there are a lot of different funds with regard to small business and enterprise and development that has been set up in this regard to assist small businesses. Did you apply for any funding? So I have applied for funding, um, but I have not got funding to date, no. Okay, so it is a process and I think it's, uh, it does take a bit of time as well. Definitely, and that's something that the Solidarity Fund was set up for, but as we know, there's millions of people that's applying for it and it goes um, with regard to who's most at need. And um, yes, I mean, they have like a paradigm that they judge on, on who gets the funding, when they get the funding and how they get the funding. Comrade Chinara, I know you're a very busy person, but just off the cuff and just on a light hearted note, uh, what do you do for fun? What do I do for fun? I absolutely love horse riding. So that's like something that COVID-19 has taken from me. Um, also, I, you know what I love? I love my own company. I, I am a me person. I'm very much, you know, like an ideal day for me would start at Carlton Hair, get my hair done. Obviously, I can't do it now uh, because of the pledge that I've taken. Um, I would dare to go to Lexi's Eatery, um, you know, get a healthy snack and then watch a nice movie, get a nice snack in between. And that would be the ideal day, an ideal day for me. Just self love time with myself all by yourself all by myself i love me time i absolutely love me time i must actually try that i must try going to the movies alone <laughs> <laughs> i i do it all the time shabila all the time i'll go to a movie solo alone i go to the restaurant solo alone um i i love doing things by myself i love going to the spa by myself as well <laughs> That I call me time. Going to the spa alone, yes. <laughs> definitely that's me time because that's when you really want to be alone as well. Anything else that you'd like to add? Some inspiration, advice to the youth out there? I think for me, you know, we hear this term all too often that we as the youth are the future. I want to break that fallacy here and now. Please guys, we are not the future. We are the year, we are the now, we are the present. We are not here to be the future, we are here to take over. Occupy those spaces, make your voice heard, and make sure that your leadership is seen. Because you are amazing, you are great, and remember, you are divine. God's divinity is within you. So use that divinity to make yourself an agent for change. Yeah. Wise words coming from a prominent leader, Kamei Chunara. Thank you so much for coming on board and it was great chatting to you and I wish you everything of the best going forward and I'm out there to see what you're up to next. Amen. Thank you so much, guys. Please keep me in your prayers. The final list for Mail and Guardian will be released on the 10th of September at 7 o'clock via ENCA. Please say a little prayer for me. Thank you. Definitely in my prayers. You got this. Well done to you already and congrats. Uh, take care and we'll be in touch. Likewise. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye, South Africa.